Welcome to the 2017 running of the All-American Futurity, presented by the American Quarter Horse Association. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to beautiful Ruidoso, New Mexico for the 59th running of the All-American Futurity. I'm Chad Brummett. We are so excited to be down here. We are so excited that you are joining us. As you can see behind me, folks, the grandstands are full of people right below us, full of people. We are getting ready for the big show of the day. And of course, that is the All-American Futurity. Uh, 440 yards of excitement. The horses are ready. The crowds are ready. Fortunately, I'm not doing this excitement alone. We're going to hop down to the winner's circle where our co-host Kristen Curry is standing by. Hey Kristen. Hey Chad, thank you so much. So much anticipation coming into this race. 22 seconds, 440 yards, 10 qualified horses, but only one going home with $1.5 million. So there's thousands of fans out here. I mean, really the village of Ruidoso itself triples in population this weekend. So a lot of anticipation. We're excited. We are here in the winner's circle. Post race, we're going to be interviewing the winning trainer, the jockey, and of course the owner. So we're we're pretty excited down here. A lot to come in the show, but we'll send it back over to you guys. All right. Thank you, Kristen. Yes, folks. So again, as he was saying, it's only 22 seconds. The race only 22 seconds, but the history of the All-American Futurity has been one that has been made throughout the decades. Our very own David Romero takes a closer look. It's been called the richest race for quarter horses, the All-American Futurity. Having a purse of $3 million at stake, the two-year-old horses will run a distance of one quarter mile. That's 440 yards, competing for the win. Where else better to be than here, Labor Day, running the All-American Futurity and Derby? The exact history of this prestigious race dates back all the way to 1959. They're off running in the 11th race at 400 yards. Although the purse was considerably smaller in those days, make that just over $100,000. It wasn't until the race in 1978 that the winnings reached the million dollar mark, making it the first horse race in history to reach that level. Just four years later, that purse was doubled to $2 million. And by 2015, the purse reached the current $3 million purse. What the Kentucky Derby is to the thoroughbred world here in New Mexico and Rio Doso Downs, the All-American Futurity at $3 million is unprecedented. So, how did it become known as the Futurity? According to All-American Futurity historians, this leads back to 1946, when a local watering hole called the Central Bar and Grill was looking for a way to promote a backroom casino at a time when casinos weren't legal in New Mexico. The solution came in the form of a horse race named after the bar. The Central Bar and Grill Futurity was finally established by the early 1950s. Although that race was discontinued, it set the foundation for later races held in Ruidoso. Set at the Downs in Ruidoso, New Mexico, the annual Labor Day race has established itself as one of the most exclusive events by the American Quarter Horse Association from Amarillo, Texas. And we are now ready to add the 2017 All-American Futurity to that rich history, folks. Let's take a look at today's betting odds. Of course, the 10 horses in the race, Mr. Secret Glory, Dash for Stone, Believe Me, Irene, He's Limitless, Uptown Dynasty, Fly Baby Fly, Big Daddy, Hawkeye, Hot Stepper, and Shake em by Perry. A uh, lot of people looking at number five and number seven in this lineup, Uptown Dynasty and Big Daddy. Uh, but of course, I am no expert at horse racing. That's why we have one of the Wrangler racing aces, Jennifer Hancock, with us. So Jennifer, in your expert opinion, what are you thinking we're going to look at in this uh, futurity? Well, the reason that you see the odds on those two horses, uh, Uptown Dynasty is just a shy, he was half a, a length away from being a triple crown contender. He qualified to the Rio Dosa. He uh, ran second in the Rainbow. He dead heated in the Rio Dosa. So, uh, 
he's the only horse that qualified to all the three major futurities today. And Big Daddy is a great horse, won a futurity out here at Rio Dosa, is the second highest money earner, and also has a great qualifying time for today's race. And he also has the benefit of having champion jockey G.R. Carter in the irons. G.R. Carter has won this race twice. If he wins it today, we might get to see that famous dismount that he does, the backflip off the horse. Uh, but those two horses are definitely two to watch today. And both of those horses coming from trainer West Giles as well, is that correct? That's right. West Giles qualified too. Uh, they're, they're outstanding athletes. I like uh, Bobby Cox's horse, Hawkeye. That's my choice in the race. Uh, okay. That's a, a homebred. And so the number eight Hawkeye is my choice. But he's right there, you know, in the, the middle of these horses, kind of towards the outside. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my pick for today. Yeah, and there, there really has been a lot of buzz around those three horses. So you're going with Hawkeye. We've been hearing a lot about Big Daddy. And of course, we're fans of Big Daddy. I got to say, as a native New Mexican, I like other native New Mexicans. Big Daddy is the only horse in this race that is from New Mexico. Is that right? That's correct. And he was bred by MJ Farms. And uh, his mom is a champion herself. She's a champion producer. So he's definitely got the bloodlines and those New Mexico roots. Okay, so you're going with Hawkeye. You think that's what we're going to see at the end of this? My picks are eight, five, seven, and four. So I had Hawkeye on top, then Uptown Dynasty, followed by Big Daddy. And then for a long shot on the outside, he's limitless. He broke his maiden in the trials. I think that he's got a long shot, but uh, he is recently gilded and then he, he won his trial and so he broke his maiden and I think that he's getting his racing career going. So there that's go. my long shot. We are excited to see this, folks. We are just getting started here with coverage of the 2017 All-American Futurity. We're going to take a quick break now on air, but the coverage continues online. So we will be right back. Stay with us, folks. How long have you been doing this? Is this new to you? No, I've been around it most of my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've only been coming to New Mexico about 15 years, but we used to, well, that's, mm -hmm. this is what we've always done, so. How long with the Futurity? Uh, well, we, I think the first time I bring one down here was about, I'm not sure, somewhere 13, 15 years ago, you know, for the All-American Futurity. So you know what you're doing here, and you're the trainer of Uptown Dynasty, uh -huh. which qualified for this year's race. Uh, tell us a little bit about the horse. Well, the horse has just been a real strong horse, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, he's he's qualified for all three uh, grade ones this year, which is very difficult to do. And I'm sure there's a lot of luck to, that goes along with it to be able to do it. Too, mm -hmm. so. And for those who aren't familiar with what goes into training, you've been working with this horse for about a year now. Yeah, we bought him in the Heritage Cell last uh, September. Mm -hmm. And I took him home and we've been working with him ever since then. So we've had him since the first time he was ridden to, to now. So. And is this every day you're out there working with him? Uh, well, yeah, well, he's, you know, he don't go on the track every day, but yeah, we've been taking mm -hmm. care of him. Yeah, every day they got to do something, you know. And this race isn't just any race. The Futurity has a huge significance here. Tell me what it would be like to have a horse, your horse that you've trained, win the Futurity. Well, it's the Kentucky Derby for quarter horses, mm -hmm. you know, so everybody wants to, anybody gets in this business wants to be in this race, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, not, it's very difficult just to make this race, let alone try to win this race. And uh, people that haven't tried, I've seen people that have lucked out and done it one time. I've seen people <laughs> that tried it for 60 years and never even got in this race. So mm -hmm. just to get in this race is, is a, a big accomplishment. And uh, to try to, to win it, with, you know, is just everybody's bucket list goal, you mm -hmm. know, so that's that's what that meant this race means absolutely and like you said it is a huge achievement just to have a horse qualify and you've yeah. had uh, horses qualify yeah. in the past yes I have I haven't been fortunate to win this one I've won the other two but I haven't won this one yet and then this one's mm -hmm. the one Pretty that, big. yeah this one's <laughs> real big yeah. and you not only have one horse that qualified you have two yes I have two I have big daddy also he's a New Mexico bred he won the Zia Faturdy here uh, G.R. Carter been riding him for me since the mm -hmm. Zia Paterdi on. I'm really glad of that. Uh, Cipriano rides uh, Uptown Dynasty. He's from Texas. He's been doing a super job. They've, they've both done a good job. They fit their horse and and I think that's a tribute to getting in the race. Absolutely. So Uptown Dynasty, Big Daddy will look for you come race day. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us Thank and best you. of luck.
And welcome back, folks. We are just getting ready for the Futurity. It's just a few seconds where we're going to toss the live broadcast. First thing, we are going to talk to probably one of the winningest races in quarter horse history. He is one, two, maybe winning his third today. Uh, of course, we were talking about J.R. Carter Jr. We're going to find out. I talked to him about whether or not he thinks he's going to be able to walk away with the third today. And if he does walk away with the third victory, if we are going to see that unique victory celebration. I started galloping horses when I was 14, just it was actually my first job I ever had was to make spending money, and I uh, got into riding races just right off, uh, riding brush track races around the small tracks in Oklahoma, and uh, was able to get my license when I was 16, which is you can't get your license until you're 16 to ride official races at the racetracks, and uh, rode weekends at the small tracks in Oklahoma, Lurman Downs, Eureka, Kansas, and uh, waited till I got out of high school before I really went at it real hard. And, uh, I graduated from high school in the summer of '86 and been hard at it ever since. Yeah, and you've had you've had some pretty good success at the Futurity in the past. Yeah, I've I've won the All American twice. I won it '98 on uh, Falling in Love Again, and then I won it again in 2008 on Stoley's Winter. And uh, that's 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 the pinnacle of your career right there. You know, if I if I had never won the All American, I'd feel like I hadn't done what I, I set out to do. And and when you when you do win, it just gives you that feeling of, of satisfaction of, of accomplishment. You went into retirement. You tried to retire. Yeah, I tried to retire. Yeah, I've kind of slipped on that retirement. <laughs> 2016, you came back. Was it the Futurity that brought you out of retirement? It was the Futurity. I, uh, I tried to retire at the end of 2015, and I made it nine months without even getting on a racehorse at all, and they offered me a mount in the finals All-American last year, and I couldn't say no. I'm doing it a little different than I used to. I'm kind of just picking and choosing and not riding near the numbers that I used to. And okay. it's, it's, it's been pretty enjoyable. I've had a fun time doing it. Okay. Now, how do you feel this year you're going to be on Big Daddy? Uh, and, uh, of course, here in New Mexico, we like Big Daddy. He's from, you know, he's a hometown <laughs> horse. Hometown. Uh, how are you feeling about him this year? Man, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really excited about him. Uh, Wes uh, has done a real good job with this horse, getting him ready. And uh, they was fortunate enough to uh, – I was fortunate enough they put me on him for the trials of Zia, and he, he ran a really good race to qualify and then run even better in the finals, and then ran even better in the trials to the, to the All-American to end up at the fastest time. He, he's been nothing but impressive. This horse is really big and strong and powerful. I mean, he's a pretty special animal. You have a, a trademark dismount when you win these races. You win the Futurity. Uh, tell us about it, and you think we're going to see it. Yeah, I'm kind of a little bit of a show off, I guess. <laughs> I, uh, I had a gymnastics background when I was a kid, and uh, whenever I win a big a big race, I do a backflip dismount off the horse. I'm 49 years old, but uh, if I win the All American, it's the one race that a guy will do a backflip for at 49 years old. And a live look there, folks, at the post parade for the. 59th running of the All-American Futurity. The riders are getting ready. The horses are getting ready. Down in the winner's circle, Kristen Curry standing by with more of our coverage. Kristen. Thank you, Chad. Now, there's actually a lot going on this weekend. There's an event that may seem like an auction, but it's actually a sale. Owners from all over the country come to Ruidoso this weekend in hopes of buying what could be the next winner of the All-American Futurity. So the horses sold this weekend will train for one year in hopes of qualifying for next year's world's richest quarter horse race. David Romero went there to show us more on this high dollar and fast pace sale. They come from all over the country. We traveled all the way from San Antonio. Even outside the U.S. We have buyers from all over the United States, Mexico. All in the hopes of selling or buying a horse. Make that the best of the best. I love it. I love being here. Um, it's fun. It's a close-knit group of people who look forward to this particular part of the race weekend every year. Everybody in the horse industry, um, we're like a community because we all know each other. We'll be at every cell, the same people, and we get to know everybody. And it's, we're just happy to see everybody when we're here. Now, before the actual sale even takes place, potential buyers can come in here to the barn where the horses are kept, meet one-on-one -on -one with the sellers, and even in some cases, come face-to-face -face with the horse. The good season horse buyer, he looks for pedigree and confirmation. Sometimes confirmation outweighs pedigree. From buyers. We study the book, look at the bloodline, and then um, when you, we pull them out and look at the confirmation, there's, we have to, my husband and I are the ones that look at the horse and my daughter. To sellers. We're just really excited and pleased to be here. 
and to be able to have the opportunity to sell our horses in this wonderful place. And that's the Rui Doso Downs, all during the annual Labor Day tradition of the All-American Futurity Race. Each buyer hoping that one of the yearlings they could pick up during the sale may next year be the winning horse during the Futurity Race. Every horse here is a year old. They're race bred. We sell the industry finest racing quarter horses. All the yearlings we have here are strictly quarter horses. Picking up a horse at what may seem to be a steal of a price at $10,000 could turn into the payday of a lifetime. What made it this way is the All-American Fraternity, the world's richest quarter horse race. In Ruidoso, David Romero, KRQE News 13. Yeah, and just to put the numbers into perspective for you guys, this weekend, 422 horses were sold for a total of just over $20 million. That's an average selling price per horse of $45,000. A lot of money being thrown around. So, of course, we will have more coming up. We're going to take a break from our on-air coverage, but the coverage actually continues online. So stay with us. Thank you for joining us. I mentioned that you are current reigning AQHA champion breeder. Tell us a little bit about that award and what it means to you. Well, it, it means so much because <clears throat> it means a lot. And it means a lot because I've been chasing Dr. Allred for years. <laughs> and, and finally, I was lucky enough uh, to get the award. And uh, so it really means a lot. And uh, I like my, I like my, mar my brood mares, and that's what it's all about. You got to have a lot of good brood mares. Now, speaking of futurities, moving on to your qualifier for the All American Futurity. Tell us about Hawkeye. Well, Hawkeye is. Uh, we raised Hawkeye. He's uh, a beautiful horse. We we like him a lot, and I sent him to California. Uh, to Jose out there, I'm sure you know him, and he uh, uh, broke him and got him going good, and so he didn't make uh, something happen. We didn't get in one of the big races out there, so we decided we'd try for the All American, and so we brought him down here, <clears throat> and I was really surprised. We we ran him in the rainbow trials and he didn't qualify so he did win and so then we <clears throat> put him in all American and he uh, he wanted to just race a couple of links and we we're just thrilled to death and uh, so we think we have a shot we don't know uh, I think he came up fifth fastest but I've had a horse that was 10th fastest that's won before, haven't you? That's right. We're looking forward to the big race. So your perseverance has paid off over all of the years. What would you tell um, somebody just getting into the business to be a breeder with their own broodmare? Um, what would you tell them as a word of advice from Mr. Bobby Cox? I always think about having great, great mares and breeding them the right way. And sometimes you... It, it's an accident because you don't, ultimately you don't know how to breed them, that they're going to work. Some mares just works no matter what you breed them to, you know. Well, there you have it. Advice from Mr. Bobby Cox is the key to success in the breeding program that leads to All-American qualifiers is mare power. And we are back, folks, getting ready for the 59th running of the All-American Futurity. Uh, as we were seeing there, uh, as you can see, the crowds are lining up. People are very excited about this. One woman that knows uh, quite a bit about not only what the audience is going through, but what the jockeys, the owners, the trainers going through, Jen Van Bieber, who is the chief racing officer with the American Quarter Horse Association. So obviously there is a ton of energy in this, in this stadium, people looking out here. What's going through the minds of the jockeys at this moment? 
Well, naturally, they have a ton of energy, too, and their job is to uh, focus that energy and keep um, their horse from getting too excited, keep them calm, cool, and collected, yet adequately warmed up, just as any athlete would need, so that they can perform their best going a quarter of a mile. Okay. Now, the owners in here, what are, what's, what's going on with them? What, what would you say that happens with the owners in this moment? Well, this is the most exciting race in our sport. Anytime you have $3 million on the line, I don't care if you're a veteran or a newcomer. You're excited right now. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, your personal opinion, we've been speaking with folks, you know, that are kind of experts and novices. A lot of people excited about Big Daddy, Uptown Dynasty, and Hawkeye. Is, are, is that kind of where you're looking, or you may be looking in a different direction? No, those are actually my picks as well. Uh, I put uh, Hawkeye on top, and the reason I did it, he, he comes into the race undefeated. I was familiar with his mother when she raced. She herself was undefeated, and it's a strong pedigree of horses. Okay. Now, uh, a lot of folks from the uh, Quarter Horse Association watching today, but a lot of folks too here in New Mexico that may be unfamiliar with the American Quarter Horse Association. Tell us a bit about uh, a bit about the organization. The American Quarter Horse Association is the breed registry for all quarter horses, both domestic and international. And so each of the horses that you see competing today are given a registration certificate through our association. And that is the stud book that uh, denotes their breeding or their pedigree. And in the horse business, uh, the bloodlines of a horse will tell a lot about its potential to perform. Mm -hmm. And we've been hearing a lot of that. People, when we ask them, who are you excited about? One of the things they say is, is that bloodline. So is that one of the things when people are looking at the odds on the day that they're looking at not only how they've recently performed, but that, that bloodline? Bloodline is very important because it will tell you about a horse's affinity to run a particular distance. A quarter of a mile, it takes a certain kind of horse to be able to go that far. And so, yes, it's something to take into consideration. It's uh, they, Trainers look at that with their owners when they buy yearlings for the potential two-year-old for the following year. And then once they get to this point, they've already competed in trials and they've shown their affinity for the distance. And so now the true handicapping based on the past performances in the racing program come into play. Okay. Now, we heard yesterday from someone uh, here, they were talking about, we've, uh, we've, I think we're going to break, is that right? I believe, yeah, we're, we, this conversation can go all day, Jen. We'll be right back, folks. Coverage is going to continue online again, so stay with us, folks. All right, and we are, I, I believe we're still going here. All right, we are looking here at the screen, folks, uh, as, as we're seeing here. So, uh, as I was saying here a moment ago, Janet, um, someone was telling us that it's almost impossible, almost impossible to qualify for the, uh, the futurity. At this point, these horses, what have they gone through to get to this point? There were 28 time trials to compete to be in the top 10 of this race. And so uh, those races uh, had eight or nine entrants in each one. So you can do the math on, on the chances that you had to make the finals. Uh, another thing to take into consideration here in Rio Doso is Mother Nature has her hand. Uh, there can be wind, there can be rain, there can be a, a headwind in one race and that whip around to a tailwind in the next race. And, and that has a major impact on times when the... Uh, Time is down to the thousandth of a second to qualify. Wow, 90th of a second. And uh, we have heard a lot from uh, Big Daddy, a lot of people saying that if he gets out clean, he's, he's unstoppable. Do you kind of feel the same way? Big Daddy is a local favorite, particularly because he is a New Mexico bred. Uh, many of these horses hail from different states, and sometimes people think a particular program that's restricted might not yield a horse that's competitive on this level. This horse has proven that he has, and so consequently the public loves him, and, and he comes from a strong, strong pedigree himself. We touched a moment ago among, among pedigree, and uh, he comes from a strong family of st stakes horses. So mm. you bet he's got a shot. And the jockey that's on him, too. He's, he's, he's got some pretty success. G.R. Carter Jr., he's, he, he, he's done pretty well with the futurity in the past. G.R. Carter is our reigning all-time leading jockey. Uh, he's held that uh, title for a couple of years now. He is the epitome of a professional, and he picks his mounts carefully. So, yeah, just in his rider, you can give this horse a vote of confidence. There you go. All right, so, uh, again, guys, we're just a few moments away. We're going to be standing by. We've been talking uh, with Janet Van Bieber, who is the uh, chief racing officer 
uh, for the all. Uh, uh, I'm sorry here, getting the American Quarter Horse Association. We're getting really excited about this. Uh, we are going to take a pause here for just a moment, guys. We are going to hop back online, so stay with us, folks. And we are back again here in beautiful Rui Doso, New Mexico for the 59th running of the All-American Futurity. Uh, and Janet, so we talked about your three, the number one. I, 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 you might have said it and I was unclear on it. Who do you think is going to walk away the victor today? Well, I mentioned that I like Hawkeye. And okay. the reason I did is because he's undefeated. And uh, horses have affinity for winning. Mm -hmm. uh, once they learn how to win, they want to get ahead. The downside of that is that means he's never had dirt in his face. So if something happens and he's a little tardy away from there, he may not know how to recover. So that's when you need to go and pick another horse. And, and uh, I liked uh, Uptown Dynasty quite a bit because Uptown Dynasty comes into this race with the most wins. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty impressive. Now, the Haw Hawkeye's also got an interesting backstory as well because he's uh, coming from Bobby Cox. Bobby Cox has been in this industry for a very, very long time. He's yet to win the Futurity. Bobby Cox is our reigning AQHA champion breeder, and it was an award that had eluded him to date, and he was most honored by it. And so uh, he's been in it a long time, and it would really be a treasure to him to win this race. But I'm going to tell you, it would be a treasure to all other nine participants as well. That's right. So uh, there again, guys, so many different stories going on here at the 59th running. I believe we are moments away from tossing to it. I can see in the distance the jockeys, the horses getting in. Uh, are we going to go now live to the feed? There, so we're looking at, so there, as you see, guys, they're getting ready to go into uh, the stalls. We're just waiting for them to go in. And I, I got to tell you, it has really been such an exciting weekend, folks. We've been down here meeting with a lot of the folks at the American Quarter Horse Association. We've been meeting folks with the Rui Doso Downs and meeting a lot of folks from Rui Doso, New Mexico. Now they're going in. I believe now we are getting ready to go in now. I think we are going to go to the race feed. My producer telling, here we go, folks. Secret glory first into the gate. With fly, baby fly in the middle. Then dash for stone next. In the favorite, Big Daddy. Believe me, Irene coming up. Hot Stepper next. He's limitless now. Shaken by Perry to the outside post. The final two, Uptown Dynasty and Hawkeye. And then we'll be all set for the grade one, three million dollar all American futurity Uptown Dynasty into the gate. The one that will complete the field is Hawkeye. Hawkeye walking in, all set for the 10th. They're running in the All-American Futurity. It was a great break for Big Daddy, and Big Daddy Lee forges to the front. He's a relentless. Back along the rails, Mr. Secret Glory. In between horses, Dash for Stone. He's limitless coming on, and here's Fly Baby Fly with his kick, and Fly Baby well, Fly just unloaded an All-American Futurity run. Fly Baby Fly wins the All-American Futurity. Fly, baby, fly. Fly, baby, fly, ladies and gentlemen. There is your winner of the 2017 All-American Futurity, Janet. What are your immediate thoughts? Well, the most exciting thing is that this is the only filly in the field. And for those of you non-horse people, this was the only girl competing against the boys. And there, she joins a select group of fillies to have uh, accomplished this feat, and it's most commendable. Wow, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, again, this online coverage will continue. Uh, we are going to cut for those of you watching us on KRQE on Fox New Mexico. We are going to go to your news, but stay with us online. So much more to talk about for the 2017 All-American Futurity. There we go, folks. So as you see in this replay. So again, walk us through what we had just saw. For those of you that are watching online, Janet, more thoughts on this. To me, 
it looked like a pretty clean break for all participants, not having had a chance to watch the replay closely. Um, but it looked like the six horse fly baby fly. And when I say horse, I should call her a filly. Uh, she positions herself well and improves. And, and that's what a trainer and an owner wants for their participant to do. Wow. So uh, uh, talk a little bit about the odds. Was she, as she came out today, as we were talking about the three favorites, where does Fly Baby Fly fit into that order? Well, the only reason I didn't pick her is because I didn't know her well enough to know how she would fare against the boys. It's not just that she's competing against the boys today, but that she just had to compete in the trials two weeks ago. And sometimes that can make a horse fatigued, and a filly might have a little tougher time bouncing back. So uh, I thought it was a little unsure, and, and I think it's really exciting that she did what she did. Yeah, very exciting. So what do you think is going through the minds now of Fly Baby Fly's team? Broodmare value. <laughs> <laughs> and in the business, uh, we're always thinking about the next generation. And this mayor, Philly, put, will be a mayor when she gets a little older, has just increased her value exponentially by winning this race. So what happens now? A lot of people might be wondering, Fly Baby Fly, what's the next step for her and their owners? You're the jockey of Fly Baby Fly? Yes. How are you feeling? I feel <laughs> yeah? very excited. Very excited? 22 seconds. Felt long? Felt short? Uh, Just it was 22 uh, seconds. Yeah. It feels pretty fast for me. You know. What's next? What are you going to do to celebrate? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just maybe breathe a little bit? Yeah. A lot of pressure? Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, so we are here in the winner's circle. A lot of celebrations surrounding the winner of Fly Baby Fly. Mr. Brown is with me. What a race. How exciting. I think my heart stopped yeah. beating every couple seconds. I got to tell you, folks, so watching from our vantage point up there on the stage and being able to see them go by, you know, we've been talking yeah. uh, just as we've been working on the show the last couple of days. We've been talking about all these race, Big Daddy, Uptown mm -hmm. Dynasty. Fly, baby, fly, that was not on our radar. But that's mm -hmm. what's so exciting yep. about these races is, is that at any moment, we started the day off with, mm -hmm. with a long shot win. The first race was a long shot win. So this is really exciting. We were able to see this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really it, the excitement, the mm -hmm. electricity is so palpable. And, you know, some of the officials were saying earlier that this race, it's the Super Bowl. It's yeah. the Daytona 500. It's all in one. Mm -hmm. And to win a race like that, I mean, I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> you can hear people yeah. just going absolutely crazy. Yeah. And it's been great seeing race upon race upon race out here at the Ridoso Downs today. Mm -hmm. Folks, the crowds have just been building and building up. We started with a very modest winter circle photo, and now we are getting to yeah. what is obviously the coup de gras. And it's it's mm -hmm. just, it's fantastic. So again, congratulations uh, to Fly Baby Fly. It is so exciting. Absolutely. And you see all the mass of friends and family following out uh, the trophy as well. Of course, the gigantic check too. Uh, that's going to be something they're going to have a lot of fun spending, I think. And a lot of a lot goes into this too. It's not just the jockey. It's not just the horse. You know, there's owners, there's trainers who are working with these horses who at start are just one year old. And then to race, they got to be two. So uh, Chad, Joining me now, I have siblings of the trainer Fly Baby Fly ladies. What is your names? Stephanie and Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> you can hear the wobble in your voice. Bless your heart. <laughs> oh, we're so excited. This is going to be a very stupid question. How are you feeling? Oh my gosh. <laughs> We've just been a family dream for, oh God, my whole life. Wow. Uh, a family we, dream? Tell us We tell have us been watching Casey's Shadow since 1976. <laughs> and we just lived it. We just lived it through my brother Jimmy and us. We're so proud of Judd Curl and Jimmy Padgett and Fly Baby Fly. Fly. Yeah. We just are so excited. Now, 22 seconds. What were you doing during those moments? I really oh, can't mind. stay on air. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched you guys as soon as the race ended, and we knew it was Fly Baby Fly taking home the title. Yeah, I saw you kind of fell to your knees a bit. <laughs> I love my brother, and there is nothing, nothing more stronger than your family, and this has been a family thing, and 
He is amazing and this horse is incredible and I for Jimmy to win yesterday the Derby and the Constellation and today to come and win the Constellation and, and now the, the fraternity. fraternity. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I can't even it's believe amazing. it. Okay, so what are you what what's the celebration? What okay, are you what well, comes from here? Have you ever seen Casey's shadow? Mm -mm. The dad promises that we go to Tahiti where the women don't wear no tops. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. We're so happy. For you. There you go. Yeah. Listen, when you just are taking home a million and a half, you yeah. can do what you want. I yeah. Guess. You have won, as you said, this, this is the biggest dance in, in quarter horse mm -hmm. racing, folks, uh, throughout the world. And again, obviously, people, they were looking at other horses, and then mm -hmm. Fly Baby Fly comes in and says, Excuse me, yeah. I'm going to come in. This is my, my race. I'm going to go ahead title. and take that futurity. <laughs> it's just fine. And like you heard the sister saying, you know, um, not the first win when it comes to this season. So, you got to earn that title, and yeah. Fly Baby Fly did that today. Yeah, and one thing that you notice too, again, uh, their, their brother, the trainer behind this, mm -hmm. you really see that this is this is a family commitment. It's not just their brother going off. This is what their brother does. This really is a family commitment, and mm -hmm. it, it seeps through their blood. They bleed this sport, as you see, their blood, sweat, and tears through it, yeah. and it really is such uh, such an emotional. An emotional moment standing by and seeing it, the pride that they have for what their brother does. And we were talking about this earlier too, and the fact, you know, they've been working with Fly Baby Fly for a year, 365 days, and it all comes up to that 22 seconds. 22 <laughs> seconds. That's wild. You see the celebration continuing over here. Still lots of claps. They're doing, uh, doing some hugs all around. This is a ton of fun. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. Yeah, and this, and, and again, folks, and I don't know if we, we had spoken about this, but this year, Labor Day, this this race, the Futurity, kind of brings things to an end for the season here at the Rui Doso Downs. So uh, this this has been really great. I mean, it's a culmination of a lot of work and a lot of people. I'm going to snag the trainer. Jimmy, yeah, come, come on, on over here. here. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Jimmy, you are the trainer of Fly Baby Fly? Yes, ma'am. Tell us, I mean, what are you feeling? Yeah, bring everybody in. We know this is a family event. Tell everybody at home, what's it like? You trained the horse that won the All-American Futurity. It's unbelievable, really. I mean, I, words can't even express it, you know. I was the assistant for Judd Curl for the last two years, and he ran into some circumstances, and these owners chose me to train this horse, and God has blessed us with good horses and a good team, and we came out with the victory. If somebody told you a year ago that the horse that you had and you were training would win the Futurity, what would you say? If they told me it was her, I'd have said, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, what's your next move? What are you doing to celebrate? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably pretty overwhelming. Yes, it's. I think we need some sleep first. <laughs> yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. go. Yeah. Well, we will let you get some thank sleep. You, thank, thank you so you. much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, we will let you go. Mr. Brummett. I couldn't even imagine, right? Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine how they have slept. You know, as he oh says, we need some sleep. Yeah. Can you imagine the anticipation building up going into yeah. the uh, going into this this race that has been a year in the making? We were nervous insane. last night. Yeah, we, we didn't even have a we didn't have a you know no pun intended horse in the race. We we were just coming out and we were excited to be here and seeing how it goes. And this is exactly to me this is what is so great about this kind of mm -hmm. event because you go in, you can look at the numbers, you can do your research. But at the end of the day, it comes down to those gates opening. The horse mm -hmm. is hitting it as hard as they can. 22 seconds later, here we are. You would think, you know, a lot goes into this. A lot of training, um, working with the horses, knowing what to look for. But there's also a little bit of luck in yeah. there, too. Yeah, it's, you know, and as we were speaking with Janet from the American Quarter Horse Association during the broadcast, uh, there are so many factors, minuscule factors that go into this. A headwind, a tailwind, something may spook one of the horses. Mm -hmm. There are so many different factors that go into this that all of that training can, I mean, it can either pay off or it can go down. I mean, it can go any direction, mm -hmm. which, you know, obviously, Obviously, is the excitement and in why, as we were saying, you know, this this stadium seats about 5,000 people. We were told that there are a little over 22,000 that were here for the Futurity today. This is exactly why they come out. Is this drama? Absolutely, and you know, a lot of people call the American Futurity the Kentucky Kentucky Derby of the quarter horse racing. And what better in location to win mm -hmm. it than Ruidoso, New Mexico? Yeah, 
Yeah, obviously. Rui Doso, New Mexico. It's, you know, and being a native New Mexican, I'm always stunned every time I come down here how absolutely beautiful it is. It is a great location. The city, as you were saying at the top of the show, triples in size. Uh, from what a lot of people say, they triple in size. It could be even bigger than that. Who knows? But so many people come out for it. And if, if, you're, if you haven't been here before, mm -hmm. you can't really see, you know, exactly what it is. You yeah. can't understand why people come out. But you're here one day. And that's all it is. All Absolutely. Right. I think we're getting the owner over here. I believe so. Come on over, sir. <laughs> I know. We're Get wiping some tears. Come we got you. Come on over. Thank you very much. Tell sure, I'll let you stand by the pretty yeah. gal. Come okay, on over. I always like to stand so, by pretty women, even at my age. <laughs> <laughs> fly, baby, fly. Tell us how you're feeling. Uh, how, how what? How you're feeling. <laughs> Man, I've... I don't think anybody can be a more excited and uh, greater heartbeat and everything well. than what I've got not, right now. I mean, you always dream of something like this, but you never in reality expect it to happen. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're elated and uh, uh, we know that uh, we got a, a, a huge horse there that's, that's going to be something to look forward to in the future. So how long have you been in this game of horse racing? Uh, we've been uh, in the quarter horse industry since... Uh, Late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you have family here with you celebrating? Yes, I do. My, yeah. my wife. Aww. And uh, <laughs> they're all over the place, right? <laughs> they're they're over there with the, the lady and they they got their hand. Their uh -huh. arms yeah, we the, see her. The black, the black blouse is my wife, okay. Terry, and she's a partner in the, the horse, mm -hmm. along with Nina Todd, which is a partner in the horse, and then my son Jason which is around here somewhere. Is, is this a family <laughs> thing for you? Yeah, yes, they did come for me. They, they're very supportive of the, 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 the horse industry and everything mm -hmm. and, and, and love it nearly as much as my wife and I do. <laughs> we don't have any grandkids or anything, and this is our... Wow. It, but it's a, it's a business. It's not just a, sure. a hobby. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, absolutely. So what is the next step? In, and you said there's a lot on the horizon for Fly Baby Fly. What comes next? Well, she's, she's paid into the Texas Classic in... in Texas and of course the that's up to Jimmy Pageant if she's going to go ahead and uh, run her back in the pageant I mean in the classic but uh, uh, she'll definitely be coming back here and uh, this that's right for the summer, derby next year yeah, that's right. for the derby last next year and uh, we expect uh, good results and everything yeah. then well, we now have you high <laughs> expectations. You, know, you, you can't always expect mm -hmm. them to exceed those expectations. Sure. Listen, you got that futurity title under your belt now, so you're prepared <laughs> for everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're completely elated, and I, well, I apologize for being so for shaky or whatever. No, 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 you're fine. Listen, you just run the futurity. You can do whatever you want to. We appreciate you taking some time to talk with us, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Of course, appreciate yeah. It. Thank you. Woo. <laughs> all right guys so much excitement here at winter circle uh, right. they definitely didn't have to twist our arm to cover this event. yeah not at all <laughs> ladies and gentlemen well as uh, as we start that that the, the day's not over they still got a couple other races going yeah. but of course the all-american futurity now in the books again fly baby fly the big winner uh, I am very excited. I'm so happy that we were able to come down. Me too. Count yeah. us in for next year, yeah, right? <laughs> exactly, folks. So again, uh, Fly Baby Fly, the big winner. We appreciate all of you joining. For those of you that are watching online, wherever you are, those of you that watched on KRQE and Fox New Mexico, thank you for being with us. Again, from beautiful, lovely Ruido. So I'm Chad Brummett. I'm Kristen Curry. We'll see you next time, folks.